friends this is shuman bhattacharjee from shomus biology here and i am here to again talk to you about some tips and tricks regarding the upcoming csi net exam which is not very far so here is five different things that you should not do in the exam hall during the csi net exam so let's start it with first thing is that you are not obligated to start with question number 1 remember that this is one thing that is always true should not start like it's not like you should not start with uh, the topic number 1 or or question number 1 but it's you are not obligated to do that you can start with any place you want it does not matter but if you start it you have to finish it and the number of questions you need to do is also being selected but uh, what happens actually if you start with the question number 1 and keep on going sometimes i find like questions are difficult at the very beginning but as you go on the questions are like simpler so if you start with the question number 1 and start you, you can't find the answers for let's say consecutive 10 or 12 questions it will create a lot of pressure on you that uh, what i prepared even i'm not be able to answer any one question from the past 12 questions is going to impact on your confidence so don't do that go for different numbers you are not obligated to even do group a group b group c in the sequence like that you can start with any of the groups and go for that but again uh, based on my personal experiments i find out that starting with group c helps then go to group a then group b or start with group a then c then b go to the b at last because in the b you don't need to apply some of your knowledge much in group b just it's a direct type question if you know the answers you can answer if you don't know you can't answer but in group c you need to apply your knowledge so while the exam occurred in the morning time at 9 to 12 uh, that's why it's better that if you go at the very morning your fresh mind you start with group c or group a which of them both of them are analytical so start with that then go to group b and finally uh, end up with group b that's first thing uh, that you should the second thing i listed here is uh, okay not giving now the second thing the second uh, thing that uh, most people do is that they prepare some of the modules they don't prepare some other topics so what did they whenever they just go for and scanning for questions and whenever they see let's say you prepare for you don't prepare for developmental biology which you most of the people do you don't prepare for developmental biology but actually you get sure five to six question from there but still you start with the question from the developmental biology and whenever you see the developmental biology question you just turn it out or let's say you see a question from evolutionary biology you didn't study that well so you just turn it out so don't do that because sometimes what happens by just it might if you read the question you might be able to answer that and it's a huge if you answer that question you don't prepare for it's a bonus it's an advantage to you so don't do that just go for it go for it and read it at least once then go for it and i know some people whenever they see any graph and things like that they turn the page down it does not mean like that they see any big question they turn it out they don't even read it they say that it's a waste of time but believe me it's not the bigger the question the more pictorial the question is that means the question has told many things the more the question means they explain more so you have to think less so you need less things to answer the question is small means so many things you have to give the input to get the answer remember that if it's a graph everything is given in the graph if you know the graph it's done question will be answered like that so do it it's important the third thing don't leave the omr sheet blank it's a huge mistake even i know some people that who have appeared uh, for the exam and and actually did well in the questions but uh, due to the horrible mistake of not filling omr at the beginning created huge mess and remember some of you i already saw last time i i appeared for i go for the exam hall to check the ambience and environment and how people are doing and i find it out like they also carry pencils to first mark the omr with pencils then they will erase that and mark with a pen do not do that never take the ball point pen and start marking them from the beginning stick to your decision why couldn't you stick to the decision and there are some horrible mistake like people who let's say read the questions they know the answer should be option b so they just put a tick right in the option b in the question sheet but they don't fill the omr what they do it actually they are doing this thing and once they do complete uh, they complete the question then at once they try to fill the omr so what is going to happen i'm going to tell you the horrible thing you are doing this for a while like like 2 hours 45 minutes passed only 15 minutes in your hand and now you finished your question so now you have 15 minutes 
and none of the OMR blanks are filled. It's completely blank. So the net score of you is zero right now and you have 15 minutes to fill that. So what many things can go wrong, for example, you start feeling uh, it might you be intense like 15 minutes, the ring, there's a bell that, that will ring that only 15 minutes, uh, the final, uh, before final bell. So you'll be like puzzled, start feeling it, what will happen, you'll spill it. The, the, those, those, uh, those pin and lines can come out from the OMR region and if it's come out, it will not count it as a right answer. Remember, you need to put a proper dot, proper filling. If it come out, you are wrong. The question will be taken as a wrong answer. Remember that even if, if the option is right, they will not recognize it. So do not do that. Whenever you start answering a question, you do that. If you are confident about do that. If you are not very confident, only for few questions, if you are not at all confident, then only exclude those questions from the beginning. Otherwise, do it from the beginning. The fourth thing is uh, the keep, the, the another mistake you make is the keep group C in the last or completely leave group A. What some people do is that uh, they start from the beginning as I told you from group A, it will take a long much time, group B then and then group C for the last attempt and that's kind of a wrong I told you. Group C demands your attention, group C demands your answering skills, your knowledge applying skills. So it's better to begin with group C. Even not then go with group A, then come to group C. Keep group B for the last, not group C for the last. Because uh, you can't answer group C questions in hurry. You can answer group B questions in a hurry, so you can keep it on the last. Remember that. And first, uh, the fifth thing is, uh, yes. After uh, unable to answer few questions at the beginning, uh, you just uh, quitting. So what happens actually normally when you start answering the question, uh, let's say first 15 question, you, you don't have any clue what the questions are. It might happen. If these things happen, most of the people already thought that I am not going to qualify this time. And this thinking is a curse. It is going to get you more bad effect compared to anything else. Like it may happen that first 12 questions you don't know. CS standard give you a lot of number of questions and that is the complexity. It's not only the exam, it's not only the answering the question, it also you have to take an important decision. NET exam also check your patience, your decision making skills that can help you to, to get the idea. Now what we, we can see like 15 questions first you don't answer in the group C. In group C remember 675 questions are there in group C itself. So what happens if you can't answer 15 questions, you still have 60 more questions and you only have to answer 25 of them, remember, one third. So you can release any three questions, you can only answer one out of any three questions that is going to give you 50 questions, right, remember that. So it's not the big deal, if you can't answer first 20 questions, it might happen in future 20 questions you answer 10 or 12. So do not be disheartened in those exam hall, don't quit on your mind, just stick to it till the exam, till the exam, watch through it, that is going to be a good thing, okay. So these are the five things that you should never do in the exams, so keep these things in your mind. If you like this video, please hit the like button, share this video with your friends because they will also need to know all these informations and to get more and more tips and tricks for CSI net exam, subscribe to my channel. Thank you.